Oh, my lab coat changed color again. Uh, I'll fix it later. Lisa's gonna be here any minute. Oh, hey. that was so fun! Oh, did you like the portal? I loved Lisa from Logics Academy, I'm glad you're here. Your lab coat changed color as well, though. It's a, it's supposed to be yellow. I think we had a glitch. I kind of like it, though, blue. No, no, but we gotta do yellow. Yellow is the science max lab coat color. Okay. So, we are here to talk about the tumble wing. I've got my big mouth tumble wing here. I have mine, yours? too. Yeah. Now, uh, what are we... We want to max it out, obviously. What else can we do? Well, actually, there's a lot of different designs that we could try. Um, this is a, a big a big mouth tumble wing. Mm -hmm. um, there's also tumble wings that are just a straight sort of single wing. Oh. Um, and then there's some that are like an actual airplane or a glider. Ooh, and we can max them all out. Of course. All right, let's get started. Let's do it. And we'll get the yellow lab coats. And I really like the blue. Don't you gotta get the yellow. There, now we've got our yellow lab coats. Uh, I've got my big mouth tumble wing, and I got my board to push the air. <laughs> oh, look at that! I voted for you. You did? I did. Oh, you were the one. OK, so let's talk about the science going on behind this air surfer. OK, so um, just like in an ocean, if you were surfing in an ocean, you'd be surfing on a wave of water. Right now, our tumbling is surfing on a wave of air that you're creating with a board. And air and water are actually both fluids. Oh, cool. So they we can... behave the same way. So it really is surfing. It is surfing. It, it, and actually, sometimes we call those air surfers. Cool. Well, why don't we have a surfing competition? Because I actually have here a Team Phil board and a Team Lisa board. OK, so what do we want? Do you want to have a race? Yeah, absolutely. OK, you want to take this one? This one flies really well. Definitely. I'll make a new one. OK. Welcome to the Air Surfing World Finals, almost live from Science Max headquarters. I'm Jim, and I'm joined by Chuck. Today, it's Team Phil versus Team Lisa. Team Lisa has a lot of heart, Jim. But Team Phil is on his home turf. Let's see how they do. Round one is, of course, the tumble wing race. And a great day for air surfing. The teams are ready, and there they go. Ooh, Team Lisa looks like she had some trouble starting. Team Phil has already pulled ahead, but Team Lisa is off the marks now. I, I think that beginning fumble might have cost her. Let's see. Team Phil with the commanding lead, but Team Lisa's catching up. Oh, Team Phil loses his tumbling at the last minute. A great dodge and a pass by Team Lisa. Can she hold it? And... No! Taking ten steps back is the rule when you drop your tumblewing, Jim. It's anybody's game! Looks like Team Lisa fumbles her start. Uh, Phil pulls her head. Can he be caught? Almost at the finish! Yes. Team <laughs> Phil with the win! What an upset! All right, you had a lot of practice with that one. Yeah, okay, so you got another design? Yeah, let's try the single wing New one. New design. Okay. So, at the end of the first round, we have Team Phil with one point, Team Lisa with zero. But now we go to the second round where the design changes. We're now looking at a single wing design. It still tumbles like the big mouse tumble wing, but made from a single wing. Does that make them harder or easier to fly, Chuck? A bit harder. They're faster and more maneuverable. If you wanted to, you could research tumble wing, and you would be able to find this design. And this is what these show you where to fold it. Yes. So the dotted lines or the dashed lines are where you would fold, and the solid lines is where you would cut. What's more, Team Lisa has more practice with this version. And they're off. Ooh, Team Phil with another early lead, but Team Lisa's catching up. Phil doesn't have much practice with this version, and it's starting to show. No, You're no, right, no, Phil fumbles. No. Ooh, Phil fumbles, and Lisa passes him for the win. There we go. At the break, we're all tied up with Team Phil and Team Lisa with one point each. Look how well mine's going. <laughs> you want the best material around? Well, you come to the right place. I've got them all. I got you Flubberoid. Magnoplex. Flexoweed. Pastoderm. Blupifol. You need hydrogelatinous substrate? I got it. But you know, all those fancy materials are nothing compared to the good old-fashioned spiderweb. Huh? It... Hey, where's Gary? Ramona, Gary got away again. You know, people ask me, Sal, is it true spider webs are stronger than steel? And I tell them, it depends. When you look at a rope or a thread or a fiber, you talk about its tensile strength or its ability to withstand force before breaking. <laughs> uh, uh. But you're comparing different things, so you have to compare them by thickness. So if you're comparing a steel cable to a spider web of the same thickness, then yes, steel is stronger. But spider web is six times lighter than steel. So if you are measuring strength to weight, spider web wins every time. Gary! So why don't we 
build more things with spiderweb. Well, for one thing, it's sticky and difficult to work with. Almost finished knitting the spiderweb sweater. It's only gonna take me about 80 more hours. And it's not easy to train spiders. Okay, Steven, one long, non-sticky thread and you get a cookie, okay? And, hey, uh, where's Marco? And Petunia. Huh? But no need to train spiders now because modern science has surpassed the spider web. Enter carbon nanotubes! <laughs> huh? This thread doesn't look like much, but it is made of tiny little tubes made of carbon atoms. Think of them like a straw. But a really long straw. Carbon nanotubes are incredibly light and strong. Remember when we compared strength to weight? Well, steel is heavy. Spiderweb is about six times stronger by weight, and carbon nanotube is about 50 times stronger than that. That's so great. So why aren't we making everything out of carbon nanotubes? I'm gonna knit a carbon nanotube sweater. Well, first, we have to make them cheaply enough to be affordable. There you go. One carbon nanotube sweater. $480,000. But material scientists all over the world are hard at work trying to find ways to make carbon nanotubes faster and cheaper. And soon, they'll be everywhere. And then spiders can go back to spinning their webs in peace. There you are, Gary. Where, where's everybody else? With Petunia and Marco and... What do you mean they're in my jacket? <laughs> Max Historica. This is Archimedes. What? Who said that? Uh, it's me, the narrator. We're doing a segment. Oh, well, I was working. Don't sneak up on a guy like that. Uh, <clears throat> this is Archimedes, an ancient inventor and one of the greatest scientific minds ever. <laughs> one of his famous inventions was the Archimedes screw. Ooh, um, um, mm. ah. <laughs> Which was used to make holes in wood. No, that's not what it's for. It's, it's for water. Uh, right. Used to make holes in water. What, what, what? No! Look, did you even do your homework? I, um, hold on. It's, uh, yeah. it's here, it's here somewhere. Uh, um, look, I'll just show you. You see, in ancient times, we had many uses for something that could lift water up from a well or to take lake water uh, from uh, the lake and put it into a farmer's field and that sort of thing. Ah, okay, I've got it from here. So, Archimedes invented a screw and he drilled a hole in the side of that container. No, no, no. Uh, look, just just sit down uh, and I'll, I'll explain it, okay? I am sitting, I'm in a voiceover booth. Good for you, now be quiet, now look. What you do is you put the screw in the water like this, and then you want to raise the water higher, you see? And so turn it around like so, and the water fills each gap in the screw, and it starts to come up. It gets to the top, and look at this. Look, we've got water coming at the top there. The water is being pumped up. It is the first water pump. I see. Still seems like a lot of work to fill a glass, but it's very cute. We made them bigger? Well, obviously we're not going to make them this big. This is not very useful. Uh, right, yeah. Archimedes, one of the greatest scientific minds ever. <laughs> A marble on top of this ramp has potential energy. As it rolls down, that changes to kinetic energy, which transfers to some stacked dominoes. They fall in a chain reaction, finally causing bigger and bigger dominoes to fall, giving the last domino enough mass to pull a string, attached through some pulleys, to a quick release on a trebuchet. Now, a trebuchet is a first-class lever, with a weight on one side and a sling and a ball on the other. If the weight falls, the sling releases the ball at the right moment and it sails through the air. It's caught in a garbage can and changes directions on a few ramps and another lever as a teeter-totter, Finally, it falls onto a rat trap, which has more energy stored in the tension of the spring. The rat trap smacks another lever, which flips around, turning over some antacid rockets. This allows the antacid to mix with the water and start a chemical reaction that produces carbon dioxide, which eventually builds up enough pressure to fire the container to another lever. 
Which tips? Dropping some marbles on a string attached to a switch. That turns off the electricity to our electromagnet. And when an electromagnet doesn't have electricity, it stops being a magnet. So our sledgehammer starts to fall. Now our sledgehammer is heavy, so it has both mass and speed when it hits this plastic bottle. All that inertia crushes the bottle, reducing its volume. The air gets put under pressure and pushes out through a tube, which takes our stomp rocket with it. The stomp rocket flies through the air and hits our cake button, which then portals in some cake! Uh-oh. Uh... Uh... Huh. Guess we really didn't think that through, huh? The cake should have laid me landed on a table or table something. Table would have been nice. There you go, science max, experiments at large, Rube Goldberg machine. Are you sure you don't want some of this cake? No, let's let's. But let's go. but let's go. Uh, uh, let's go. See, this is this is why this, this is why you do it, Sonia. Ho oh, oh. Okay. On the ramp now. <laughs>